Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today I'm at St. Monica Catholic Church in St. Louis, Missouri, and with me is Heather Martin Cooper, the organist and director of music here. Heather, how long have you been playing here at St. Monica's? Uh, this is my 18th year. 18th year, but you've been a part of this church for a long time. I have. I, my mom and dad moved into the parish in 1977, and I, for the <laughs> most part, grew up here. So this is pretty much your home this parish, home. as you know. Well, the organ we're talking about today is a Martin Ott instrument. Martin's here from St. Louis, and this instrument says 1991 on it, but we know he was working on it in 1989 when it was commissioned and contracted. Uh, it's an all mechanical action organ and 27 ranks is what Martin and I came up with. So, Sounds right. Um, and it's been through a few little changes. Uh, yes, most, it has. Most recently we improvements. had improvements. Improvements. <laughs> most recently we had a big problem. What happened a few years ago? Oh my gosh. Well, somebody two days after Christmas um, lighted a fire in our church, oh, uh, lighted the nativity scene on fire, and then walked out the door. Wow. And so we had a lot of smoke damage. By God's grace, no human beings were harmed. And the building was, uh, the was building not damaged. Was, it was beyond. a big, big cleanup in here, but no, uh, no one was hurt. So the organ, though, um, got really dirty, and um, the facade pipes did get a little bit of water uh, splash when the hoses from the fire. Uh, firefighters came in, and that unfortunately has never been able to be. The pipes have never really been restored. Yeah. So after the fire, uh, Martin came and the next day he came in and kind of did an evaluation and determined there was no damage to the organ. The fire was really only about 10 feet from the case, so we're really very lucky. Wow. Um, but it was filled with soot and an awful lot of debris um, that he said that an organ case shouldn't look this dirty on the inside until it's 100 years old. Uh, that's a different story about how the church had been cleaned for a period of years. Uh, well, a leaf blower was used oh, from the no. back to the front to blow it all. And where did it go? Oh, my gosh. Right in here. So uh, we were, in a way, it was a, a blessing in disguise because the whole organ came out and it was cleaned. Um, and we were able to um, have some improvements made to it. Um, I, I call it finishing the organ. It, when, we, when the organ went in, um, I was in college at the time, and I remember... Um, he cut a few corners for one thing for the space that this is in. It's, it's a very specific, very tight fit. Um, Martin doesn't have any other organs that look like this one um, at all. It's not maybe uh, it's not at all the classic look uh, for the kind of organs that he builds. But he built it so that uh, you know he was within a half an inch of the ceiling, if you will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, really very tight. Um, there was some at the time. Um, opposition to the instrument, and it was thought that if the right side of the case had um, a white painted finish, it would make it look like the organ wasn't so big. So I guess the <laughs> perception was that people wouldn't think it was, you know, yeah. uh, whatever, as large as it is or whatever. Um, <laughs> then we had the church um, kind of renovated in a way in 2004, 2005. And the wood tones throughout the church were made to be a lot more in line. Uh, we had different, the, the pews at the time were honey colored. The ceiling was a little lighter. Um, the finish on the pews was really in bad shape. So they made an attempt to more bring in line the wood tones in the church. And somebody, um, quite unannounced and uninvited, came in and on the white side of the organ case, hand painted a wood grain wow. <laughs> and that was not terribly well received uh, this organ then got an entire new uh, wood facade oh, wow. as an eighth of an inch you can see all around that yeah. um, <laughs> the whole case got a, an oak um, okay. front or frontal piece if you will so that was one of the first things but um, back to what i was saying there were a few stops that were uh, not complete. For instance, the four-foot flute on the grate ended at tenor C at the time. Shortly after that, um, it was extended down to tenor C. But after the fire, it was extended all the way down to low C. That was great. Um, there was not a celeste in the organ. There was a gems horn, and it also ended at, at tenor C. Um, Martin added an eight-foot Italian principle mm. in the swell and revoiced the gems horn as a celeste. And that Italian principle is just the most versatile <laughs> and beautiful stop I'm, 
on the organ, and there are a number of really lovely stops. So things like that. Um, we added a Zimbelstern uh, also after the fire, which has just been kind of fun. The organist at the time was my, my teacher and mentor, Dr. Marie Kramer, and I don't think she was such a fan of Zimbelsterns and accessories like that. Uh, but it's been a lot of fun to have the symbol stern. It's added some festivity and, and color on festive days. Um, it has an optional off button for the star, so you can play the symbol star uh, without the star turning. Okay. Just the bell. Well, I'm anxious to hear some of it. Um, let's just start. The grate is what's right here in front of us. The divisions are side by side, so we have the swell to the right and then the grate in front of us. So let's start um, right with the grate, let's, that eight, eight foot principle, which is some of it's out here in the facade. It is right here. clear and very right in our face here as <laughs> we're up next to it. It is, and it's a comforting sound at the same yeah. time. It's not terribly aggressive. Mm -hmm. Nice and warm, okay. And then we have an eight foot octave to add on top of that. Let's just keep building that up. Mm -hmm. And then we don't have a two-foot uh, principle. We do have a flute that you can add on that, but I assume the mixture probably is a two-foot The two-foot is in the mixture, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very bright sound now. Um, Here it is. Yeah, very big and full. Okay, um, and just for fun, let's go ahead and put the reed on to go up from there. That's a big, big, brilliant sound. Let me hear just the trumpet by itself, just to hear uh, what it sounds like. Okay, yeah, a lot of brightness, not a, not a huge sound there. Okay, and then we also have uh, some flutes here in the grate. What do we have? Roar flute. Or fl Lovely. Mm -hmm. Now we don't have a four-foot flute, and we have a quint. Or do we do have a four-foot flute? Because this is added after the fact. Now explain what you just pulled there. So this is a double draw with a one and three fifths. Mm -hmm. um, originally, the four-foot flute ended at tenor G. Okay. Um, then about a year or so after the organ went in, uh, Marie said, "You know, we really can't play any Tierra Santaya. <laughs> if we could just take it down." So she convinced Rob um, Martin to add the seven pipes to take it to tenor G, and then after the fire it was extended all the way down. So we do have a four foot flute, we but do. It, it just lives on this draw knob with the one and three fifths as well. So let's, let's hear the eight and four mm -hmm. together. And then a two foot flute, then mm -hmm. we'll go on top of that. Yeah, yeah. And that's big enough to accompany some congregational yeah, definitely. singing. Yeah, Gentle, clear sound, though. It really fills the room. I should add, there's like no soft surfaces in here hardly at all. So Not the, many. the organ really travels all the way through the back of the room. Even though it's off to the side, I can attest the back of the room, it just it The goes sound is so much better in the back. Yeah, yeah. yeah about two thirds of the way back. Okay. Um, and then let's, uh, talking then about that, the one and three fifths cornet there. Um, we also, we do have a quint, two and two thirds, that so we can add to it. And then you just pull this the rest of the way out. You do. And that gives you the. The four and the one and three fifths. Okay, so here's our full cornet then mm -hmm. on the grate. Yeah, 
the that sound. That is one of my favorite sounds. Of yeah, the I can imagine. Let's uh, talk about the swell then, which again, it's over here on this side, mm -hmm. on the top manual. Tell me what stops we get in the swell. Well, what I say is the most versatile stop on the organ is the eight foot principle. And this was the one that was added. This was completely new. Yes, Italian principle. A very smooth, gentle sound there. A little smaller scale than the great principle, but but also uh, kind of fluty, and just has a has a lovely sound. So yeah, I can see that's a, a very versatile addition. So with the box closed, it's it's still um, not too loud to accompany a canter. And then you know even sometimes on the same psalm, I might uh, close the box with a canter and then open it for the people <laughs> like just on the here here it is. This one stop alone. Here it is uh, open. Closed. Yeah, quite a difference there. It is. All right, good. And then uh, we go up from there. We have a four-foot principle in this. Mm -hmm. one. Yeah, it blends really nicely. And then a two-foot. And then uh, this stop here, another double draw? Is this it correct? is. Yeah, the quint is halfway out, the one and the third. Okay. So maybe. Full mixture. Another brilliant mixture there on top of that. It's pretty bright when you're right in front yeah. of it, but again, out in the room, mm -hmm. it, it sounds like a different organ. Okay. It really does. All right, let's keep going through the swell. What other okay. stops do we have? Well, we have an eight foot gedecked. It might sound kind of cool with the tremulance. Yeah, turn that on. Let's see what that is. Very nice. Lovely with a little bit of attack on it, so but not too much. <laughs> All right. And then we have a four foot four flute. Four foot as well. flute. You want to build it up. Lovely. All right. And then you mentioned we have a, a Celeste that was made out of a Gems horn. It was revoiced into a Celeste. And I'll play it first with the, just with the Gedeck. It makes kind of a flute Celeste, oh, which okay. is sort of fun. Uh, let's just keep going here. Another way oh. of doing a flute celeste and it's to couple this celeste to the great. Let's okay. see if you like that. Yeah, yeah and it, it, it works both ways. <laughs> it does, right? yes. And then it also uh, is intended for use with the, the principal, correct? With the principal, yes. Let's see. Yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing that that is that flexible. Uh, it gives you that many more colors just by the addition of one it's stop. It's kind of fun. <laughs> All 
All right, we have one reed here in this division. One reed, indeed. Yeah, the oboe. Nice, br brilliant sound, but very restrained and, and calm. At the same time, you can, of course, close that down and uh, mm -hmm. have it function either as a, a brilliant solo or just a little growly chorus read. So. Right, it makes a nice um, little uh, chorus read, like okay. you said, yeah. Um, well, uh, that's all of our manual stops. Uh, we have some in the pedal here as well, though, um, starting with a 16-foot sub bass that you have. Sub bass, yeah. The sub bass is, um, we're really blessed because it balances just about everything. I can play it against this Gedeckt and it's not too loud. And at the same time, it's, it balances out Indeed. The chorus. Yeah, okay. So we're really blessed with that. So yeah, the sub bass 16, and it's right there behind yeah. the. Uh, so the, the, the pedal here is in the tallest part of the case that it's allowed to be in, um, so that makes sense that that's right there. Uh, then we going up. We have a, an octave bass, eight foot. Mm -hmm. That's here in our facade too. So yeah, speaking right. The bottom in the octave is shared with the green. Yeah, okay, I see. Um, and then uh, eight foot roar flute. Mm -hmm. And then continuing on, four foot choral bass. And that's all actually up here that's in the same great. level as the grades. That's another one of my favorite songs. Yeah. <laughs> and then finally, a 16-foot posan. Very nice, yeah good underpinning there for the full chorus. So on this, the great eight foot trumpet, mm -hmm. um, when you pull it all the way out, it plays uh, like you would expect on the, the great, but if you play, if you draw it only halfway, it plays in the pedal. And that makes it really kind of useful in yeah. ways you wouldn't necessarily it's very expect. You could be a, a solo or beef if, up your pedal. If yeah. you have a cantus firmus in the pedal, Hmm. Um, there is no pedal mixture, so uh, once in a while there'll be a piece where I really want strong uh, bass, and I'll play the the plenum on the grate, and then draw half draw that trumpet. And, well, that's that's fascinating. Yeah, that might be another way that he sort of cut a corner, and it's been really very versatile with the trumpet to be able to do that. And with all the couplers are um, hitch down pedals. They are. So we have each manual to pedal, and then the manuals together, correct? Yes, the uh, grate to pedal, swell to pedal, and swell to grate. And then we have a piston that I assume is the magic Zimbelstern. That's the Zimbelstern, <laughs> yes. And it has, um, this is a delay start knob here. So if I wanted to start, I don't know how many seconds it is. I just set that. And then it goes. Okay. So <laughs> then it's got the um, speed. <laughs> no. So it can go. Um, well, no, I've got the delay. That's the slowest. And then as you dial it, it can go faster. I'll take it about halfway. And then the volume. That's the oh, quietest wow. at about medium speed. And it just dials up. 
So there you have that. So much more versatile than most of them are. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And then the little button, here the red button will make the star turn.
Uh, we're lucky today to be joined by Martin Ott, the man who built this wonderful instrument. Um, it, the, again, the date says 1991, but the, the contract was probably 89 or 88. Yeah, about three years earlier. Yes. And uh, Dr. Marie Kramer was the organist here at the time. Um, how did you get, come to know uh, Dr. Kramer? Well, I came to St. Louis in December of 1970 for the first time. And I stayed at Mr. Brummer, who was Midwest Organ Service. And one evening he said, I have to call a friend. And I said, well, it's nine o'clock. Can you still call somebody? He said, oh yeah. And it was Marie Kramer. And uh, we, our friendship started very early on. She started with Heila, she spoke German. She introduced me to a lot of possibilities of, to build organs. She had a brother monk at Marmion Abbey and an uncle, it's the same. Later on, I built an organ for them too. But uh, here at this church, there was an electronic instrument. And so, of course, they wanted a pipe organ, and he asked me if I could design, and make a proposal for an organ. Of course, it would have been a tracker. Now, the council has the swell stops on the right side, which is unusual for America, and the grate and the pedal on the left, because the swell division plays over to the right and so that the stop action doesn't cross the we put on the right side. Now this organ is all mechanical action. The only thing electric is a blower, which is three quarter of a horsepower, makes all the sound. And then the, the key action, now this key from here has to go way over on the right side, about 10 feet. And if the roller board would be 10 feet long, there would be torsion and the, and the action wouldn't be crisp. So the action goes in an angle to the roller board and the roller board is very short, the individual rollers. That's important for the action. Also, the action is self-adjusting. There is a mechanism which floats, we call it a floating action, and in order to keep the floating not jumping, there is a shock absorber installed. And that is our standard way to build these organs. The facade pipes after the fire, they had a tint on them from the smoke. So we had to steel wool them with very fine steel wool. You know, the tin pipes, actually all these pipes, including the reeds, come from our hometown, from Giesecke and Son in Göttingen, where I was born. And my father was the vice president and director there for 40 years. So I always had great service for my pipes. Here we have the great and pedal chest is combined. So there are 56 pipes in the manual and 30 pipes in the pedal. So all these tone channels are here. This is the fagot for the pedal. And then right behind is the pedal reed and great reed, which shared it's a double draw. You can play it from the pedal or from the grate. We're looking here into the grate. You have to look over the reeds, I should say grate and pedal, as this chest contains pipes for both. board for the grate and the pedal and then in an angle we see the, the tracker action 
in two levels, C side and C sharp side, on top of each other, leading over to the swell. Yeah, when you angle the tracker action, it will come too narrow. That's why you go in two levels. So the key action arrives here and then it goes to the roller board when I move a note. This is where the key action arrives, goes to the roller board, the transmission, and up above here you have the valve. Now here we on a mechanical action organ with a slider chest as this is. You have from front to back a channel and when you open the valve, the air will enter into this channel and filter. Then the slider is a wooden strip which has corresponding holes with the tow board and the wind chest. So when those holes are lining up, the pipe will play. So every pipe has two valves. One is the tone valve, and the other one is the register valve. As a governor, the valve can open, if you play staccato, the valve would fly open farther than it has to. That's why we put a stop there, so that the action repeats quickly. If there wouldn't be, the valve would pass this point, would take more time for it to close again. And you know, when the valve only goes as far open as the key depresses it. It doesn't have to go any farther. Very simple system. It's the original style of a pipe organ. If J.S. Bach would walk in and he said, oh, I know all that. I wouldn't have to explain it to him. This is the reservoir which will fill up and supplies wind to each wind chest. Now there two winches in this organ. One is a swell only, uh, and the other one is grate and pedal combined on one winches. They have the same wind pressure, about three inches of water pressure. If you have a U-formed glass, and the pressure is three inches if you connect to this organ. So it's not a lot of air. And this is the shock absorber. You know, if you play, press your hands down on the keyboard for let's say half a minute, it will loosen up, but then it adjusts itself again. It's a very s simple system, but very effective. There's very little weight. This square rail is weighted, that is, has maybe only two pounds of pressure down, which is then regulated in this piston and cylinder filled with oil. We're looking into the swell, starting with the oboe in the back. We have our mixture, the two foot war flute, and the gedeckt. There's our four foot press tent. With the gims horn in front, which is now our celeste. The bottom of the Italian principle is all Haskell and it's set over here on the side. There's also some uh, Gadex that are actually located uh, on the other side of the swell box so they speak into through the wall here. They're belonging to the swell but they're in the great and pedal open area. We've opened another panel and here we see the roller board underneath the grate and pedal which is obviously much more complicated because of the action coming up from the pedal and from the grate as well. 
when I apprenticed with my uncle, Paul Ott, in Göttingen in the mid-60s, I learned about this tremoland. It has three chambers. There's one chamber, one, two, three. One chamber controls the other two chambers, and it's a motion of air going this way, and another tube goes the other way. Then there is a bellow under the swimmer plate so that the amplitude is up and down, up and down. It's not just up, up, up. That's why the, the terminal is so gentle. It works pneumatic. And find a bit of dirt on there. <laughs> and you can adjust the speed on these screws by supplying more or less air. See, this is a controlling unit. And actually those ch valves are larger than this one. Since the acoustic was so bad and the ceiling needed to be painted, I suggested to contact Scott Rydell in Wisconsin, acoustician, good friend of mine, what paint we should use for the ceiling. And I, I hear that today, yes, it's, <laughs> the sound is here. Even just paint can make a difference in the, the right paint kind of can make, Yeah, it was a porous ceiling. And it's been, this, this church is not very tall. The hard surface makes it quite a difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the acoustic has changed to the better over the years. Frankly speaking, the organ is pretty bright to me right now because there are no cushions, there's no congregation. And I also noticed that the bass has improved with the, with the acoustic. So you could see how low down the blower is. Um, in 2019, in the spring, I was practicing getting right, right before First Communion and all of a sudden the winding wasn't quite consistent. Well, what was happening is what happens to all organs after a while, the leather on the blower blew a big hole. And I thought this would be interesting to show just because this is the piece that one of them was replaced on that blower. But even as low down as it was, this is all soot from the fire. So when the smoke came in, it really blew into the organ and it descended all the way down there to where those pieces of leather are. This, this is the original color around there. And uh, you can see how black it was from the soot. So that was all over this church. Every wall, every surface was dark gray or black like that and indeed the entire organ on the inside and the outside. Filthy. Well, these were original, um, a wonderful feature, these two cabinets that uh, Martin had this extra space underneath the swell chest and he made them for uh, the organist to store music in and we do. So this is all uh, my music basically and top shelf has a room for different supplies. And then on this side is handbell choir uh, and instrumental on ensemble and stuff like that. So we're really, really blessed to have these original. And then after when he did the renovation in 2017, there was space over here that was always just open. And Martin um, take, took these panels and created doors out of them and gave me two more very deep shelves on this side. Um, and then the whole area behind the pedal is a wide open space where we now store our handbell and choir child instruments. Heather, thank you so much for introducing me to the Martin Ott organ. Of course, I've been here before because we use this instrument for the Your Sunday Service videos, mm -hmm. of which Heather is one of the performing organists. If you haven't seen that, uh, it's on our channel, on our YouTube page, there's our, our other channel. It's for, got literature for those of you who are church organists looking for music that you want to play. Um, people like Heather learn the music and demonstrate it so you don't have to worry about wasting time. If you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. If you do like it, um, we've got a great performance of it, and then you can just find a, a link to it. So it's been a fun little project uh, to introduce people to more music so you can also go to your sunday service.com and it'll take you right there to our videos you can subscribe they're coming out about every other day right now um so thank you for your hard work on that oh well, thank this, you for your hard work on it <laughs> that's organ. why they're coming out every other day <laughs> and this organ does a great job of, of bringing all those pieces to life so it's been great to hear it today to really spend some time with it and mm -hmm. learn some of the things i didn't know about it 
Again, you can find those on the channel and subscribe. And you can also subscribe to our channel because we have more organ tour videos coming out very soon. Uh, and there's a little bell down there. You can click to get notifications. Until those videos are out, though, remember you can always find streaming classical organ music on our three stations, organlive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. My thanks to Martin Nod for his help today. And thank you, Heather. Until next time, I'm Brent Johnson. Talk to you soon.